Hello again. In a previous video I showed you me moving small tomato plants up from these trays into these yogurt pots and I showed you a light tube, a free light tube that would help you grow on strong young tomato plants in the yogurt pots on a windowsill at home. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to move those tomato plants up from the yogurt pot into a water bucket before the water bucket is then taken into the greenhouse and the tomato plant then grows on to maturity. Um, I'm cutting you back to some video to show you me doing that now. I shot that piece of video in the middle of our Covid uh, lockdown. We were all locked down. Uh, I think I was getting a bit of cabin fever at the time because <laughs> I referred to lockdown a couple of times but I also went off on a rant um, and yeah I can only put that down to some sort of cabin fever that I was suffering at the time but hey we've got over that um, it's not far off spring now we're in the UK and we'll be starting all over again um, so yeah enjoy the video enjoy your gardening hope to see you later on this year in the garden this is Own Grown Veg, signing out. Hello and welcome to Own Grown Veg. Today I'm going to be putting up my tomato plants. I've got them growing in yogurt pots and now I'm going to move them up into these 10 inch water buckets. The varieties I'm growing this year, and I'm only growing 10 because I only have a small greenhouse, uh, I'm growing five varieties, two of each. I'm growing Cerise, which is a small tomato, uh, Moneymaker, which is an old favourite, Crimson Crush, which allegedly is blight resistant, Alicante and Elsa Craig, two more old favourites. Uh, what you're looking at here now are the buckets already charged with a soil based compost. Now this soil based compost is something that's been on my smallest compost pile in the world Uh, for the last six or seven months I've taken it off I've emptied the uh, contents of the buckets from that pile into a barra and I've mixed in some fertilizer and I've had to use what I have because as you know we're in lockdown so it's not exactly perfect but it's as good as it's going to get I could have actually went and bought some fertiliser to add to this mix but I thought no, if we're going to do this, this lockdown business, we're going to do it right. We'll work with what we've got, we'll just use what we've got. So in this soil, incorporated in this soil faced compost, there is some uh, blood fish and bone, which is good. There is some grow more, which is good, two balanced fertilisers. And then I've thrown in uh, some onion fertiliser and some potato fertiliser and I've done that it's because that's all I had <laughs> that's all I had that's all that was to hand and now I don't have any fertiliser left at all uh, so there wasn't a lot went in here yet I don't think I've overdone it uh, but that's what's in here okay let's start and um, move some of these tomatoes up out of the yogurt pots into these water buckets let me show you the tomatoes first Hey, how's lockdown going for you? How's it going? I had a new garden, have you just started? Has lockdown got you into this? Well, I'll tell you, 
on uh, on Friday night um, I would normally go out for a few pints with my mates but I haven't been out for about seven weeks now and Friday gone I was just persuaded to watch um, Gardener's World on the BBC uh, and I've got to tell you I was disappointed I was disappointed it didn't seem to be a program for gardeners like me and you it just didn't let me tell you and oh, by the way if you want to come with a comment yeah please do look we twist this like this this comes out like this that goes into there like that hopefully this will come out in a one this is Elsa Craig That should fit perfect. Hey, and it does. Come on, come on. Um, yeah, I was disappointed with the program. I mean, the gardener started by saying uh, he welcomed everybody that was uh, new to garden, and we talked about lockdown. He said he had his uh, there was no cameraman in the garden with him. He was working on his own. He had a few cameras set up. Um, and yet, when he welcomed the new gardeners, I thought, right, this programme is going to tell new gardeners a thing or two about gardening. Um, I couldn't have been, it couldn't have been further from the truth. What he did was, firstly, he shot into his uh, potting shed cum greenhouse. Now, this potting shed cum greenhouse was big and I mean big, and bigger than anything that you and I are ever going to have. Okay, so that wasn't for me and you. Just, it was just a big greenhouse, a big potting shed. You're possibly working in your garden like I am. You're not going to have that. And he went in there and he brought some seedlings out. And he talked about those and then he moved on I, I might get the sequencing wrong here but he moved on to a big terracotta pot and I'm telling you this terracotta pot was big and he was about to transplant into it uh, let me think I'm having to think now an olive he had an olive tree well I ain't got an olive tree of you Ah, I didn't think so. So he's going to plant this olive tree. And he lifts it out of one pot, breaks the root ball, pops it in this terracotta pot. And I'm thinking, well, if you're in lockdown, you may have lost your job, you may be furloughed, your business might be going pear-shaped you probably haven't got a big terracotta pot like that and neither have you got the money to buy one neither have you got the money to buy one so I thought well hey that's not for me either let me just move these get some more space So he's, he's planted his, what's this, money maker. So he's planted this thing and then he decides the um, guest gardener, we'll go and, go and see what the guest gardener's up to. So when the guest gardener uh, came on, uh, they were visiting a cherry orchard, cherry trees. And there was row upon row upon row of those cherry trees. And I just thought to myself, well, that's not going to be much information for someone that's self isolating cherry trees. And then to cap it all, we got every single name of every variety of cherry tree in Latin. Come on, what's all that about? Latin? 
it's a dead language. The only place I think it's used regularly is probably the Vatican. Latin. I mean, they're going to tell you the name of a cherry tree and you rem you'll forget it within a blink of an eye. And look, you might say, well, you could write it down. Well, yes, you could. <laughs> Are you... When the nursery's reopened, and hopefully it'll be soon, are you going to the nursery to ask for a cherry tree by its Latin name? Como? Absolutely crazy. So, then we get back into the garden. We get, we get back to the guy in the garden. Um, and he's transplanting something, so he has a hole to dig. I need to come round the other side to show you this. He has a hole to dig. So he puts the spade in and digs this hole. Doesn't need a single obstruction, I'm telling you. You're a new gardener, you're gonna be hitting these. You're gonna find a piece of concrete. The stuff you're growing in, it's gonna be like that. It's going to be clear. You might even dig up half a building brick. But his spade goes straight in. Doesn't strike a brick, doesn't strike a tree root, doesn't strike anything. Well, that's because that ground's probably been gardened for 20 years or so, 30 years. And that soil has had a lot of work done on it. And the week previous, or a few weeks back when I, I caught this show, they're actually in a walled garden. Well, a walled garden usually belongs to a stately home. A stately home usually belongs to somebody that's stately, and somebody that's stately can afford a gardener, a full-time gardener. Well, it's no wonder that soil's good, is it? You know, it, so that didn't uh, resonate with me either. And then we have another gardener, um, and he's in South Africa. And he's in South Africa to meet a couple who's gonna take us up a mountain and show us wild iris. I think it was iris. Well, is this a botany program or is it a gardening program? Is it a geography program? What's what's it trying to deliver? I just felt that wasn't for me either. Now you may disagree with me, and if you do, just you know, send us a comment, let me know. But I just felt that right, it's, the script wasn't right. I mean, I've no issues with the presenters. The presenters are good and they are excellent gardeners. There's no doubt about that. But it's the material they're using. And now, and now, and now they're actually getting footage shot by members of the public who just started taking up gardening. And hey, guess what they're growing in? Yeah. They're growing in yogurt pots, woo! I mean, if you want to know how to grow in yogurt pots, this is the channel for you. In fact, there's a few channels on YouTube which show you how to grow in yogurt pots. Um, and yeah, so, so we go to South Africa and we have a look at these, um, at these wild iris. Well, what's that got to do? with a new gardener in the UK. I mean, what are the channels like in Canada, in America? Do they, do they cater for a, an home gardener, a back garden gardener? Who, who are they catering for? Are they talking in Latin? Are they talking in tongues? I don't know. Anyway, what we got? Two to go and then we finished. Right, these are the last two. Um, and what I'll do is, actually, do you get out? Uh, do you get out at all to support the um, frontline workers, the people who are out there battling COVID-19? Do you get involved with any of that? Any of the clapping and the and the support? Well, I'm going to tag 
some film on the end of this, just a short piece, and it'll show you what we do in a small market town in the UK, just to show our appreciation. I think you'll enjoy that, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. And then, when I've got this one potted, I'm going to water them, and later today they're going in the greenhouse, uh, but I'm going for a cup of tea. That's it, that's your lot. I'm going for a cup of tea. How good's that? Hey, look at that root ball there. Come on, that's a root ball, isn't it? I did, actually, I did water, I don't know if you've noticed these. These are some um, yogurt pots that I turned into air pots. I don't know if you can tell, there's, there's holes in there all the way around. And what I did was, while those were in, filled them with water. The water's worked its way out into that uh, into that soil-based compost. So there's, there's plenty of moisture in there. It looks dry, uh, but it isn't. Trust me, it isn't. Hey, couldn't have been easier, could it? Right. Let's me and you give these a, a small drink of water. As I say, the, the compost in there is quite... Uh, moist, although you, you couldn't tell looking at it, but it is, um, and yeah, enjoy the bit of film I'm just about to add to this, and this is, uh, this is homegrown veg, signing out. <laughs>